Since Fortnite Battle Royale was first released, the game has changed a lot. Originally, the map had big gaps between all of its locations, no battle pass for you to earn skins with, and no challenges for you to try and complete every month. In today's video, we're going to be exploring all the ways that Fortnite has changed, sometimes for the better, and sometimes definitely for the worst. There's a rumor that if you like this video and subscribe to Arcade Cloud, the next area in Fortnite will be named after you, so make sure you like this video and subscribe. Oh, we could be lying, I don't know. Number 10, Lucky Landings. Back in March, a new location was added to Fortnite Battle Royale, and for a little while, it had everyone talking about what might be coming for the future of Fortnite. Located at the southern edge of the Fortnite Island, directly between Flush Factory and Moisty Mire, Lucky Landings is an area that fits straight into the whole Chinese New Year's vibe that was going on in Fortnite at the time. Complete with cherry blossom trees and oriental styled buildings, there's no denying that this new area definitely made the south side of the map look much more pretty. Which was desperately needed considering the biggest two locations in the south were literally a toilet factory and a swamp. To be honest though, people realized pretty quickly that Lucky Landings wasn't going to be a very popular landing location for very long. Sure, when it first got added to the game, everyone was losing their minds trying to drop there. But as time passed, we all figured out that Lucky Landings is sort of really bad, to be honest. There just isn't that much loot in comparison to bigger cities and towns. And because it's way out on the edge of the map, you'll almost always have to run to get to the next zone, which just isn't worth it in the long run. But the reason Lucky Landings was such a big deal for Fortnite is because of the ideas it started giving people. When we really started getting into the whole meteor conspiracy theory, people seriously started to connect Lucky Landings to the meteor. They figured because the area was called Lucky Landings, and because the area was basically useless, that was where the meteor was going to crash into. Some people went even further. They said that because the area was specifically called Landings, some sort of alien spaceship would come along and land there. I mean, in the end, it was a meteor that dropped on Dusty, nowhere near Lucky Landings, but at least the conspiracy theories were fun. Number 9. Battle Passes When Fortnite Battle Royale first released, the whole leveling up and reward system was completely different to how it is now. These days, you have a battle pass that you can purchase. It gives you access to exclusive battle pass skins that you get for reaching certain tiers in the pass, and new challenges every week to help you level up. The whole battle pass system is probably one of the main reasons Fortnite Battle Royale is still so popular. It's something that keeps people engaged in the game for months, always giving people something to work towards and something to unlock. Season 1 was kind of similar, but also completely different. For a start, you didn't actually have to buy a battle pass, and you didn't have to get tier skins either. Instead, all that mattered was your main level. As you slowly ranked up over the course of the season, completing challenges and killing people to gain experience to increase your level, you would unlock the ability to buy skins in the item shop, only it was actually called the season shop at the time. If you think about it, it's kind of the complete opposite of how the battle pass works now. Now you buy the battle pass and get everything for free as you level up. But in the past, you got the ability to level up for free, then you had to buy all of the items you wanted as you unlocked them. Season 1 was much more expensive if you wanted all of those exclusive skins. So the new way of doing things is definitely a much needed improvement. Number 8. Builder Pro In April, Fortnite Battle Royale added a new control scheme into the game that was custom built to make building in the game as simple and as quick as possible for players on console. This was because ever since crossplay has been introduced into the game, PC players had an obvious and extreme advantage over their console counterparts. They could outbuild a console opponent with ease, even if they weren't very good at the game. But now that the Builder Pro controls have been added into the game, things have changed completely for console players. Builder Pro is, as the name suggests, a way of controlling the game that makes building much easier. When you enter building, instead of having to move through each building tile individually, they all get assigned their own buttons. The stairs are on the left trigger, walls are on the right trigger, the floor is on the right bumper. It's a much easier way of building things than console players had before, and in a lot of cases, it actually makes their building faster than a PC player's, if the PC player doesn't really know what they're doing. Number 7. Shopping Carts For the longest time, it seemed like vehicles were just never going to be added into Fortnite Battle Royale. I mean, for a start, the Fortnite Island is actually pretty small. The chances are that, no matter where you drop, you will always be able to at least make the very first circle just by running. And if you can't, then you might have a jump pad or a bounce pad to help you along the way. While it didn't look like they were needed at all, shopping carts were added anyway, and now I don't think I can imagine the game without them. 
The shopping cart can lift up to two people, though using it solo works as well. The driver can't fire the cart, but the person sitting inside can take shots. If you go down a slope, some stairs, or a hill, you will pick up some insane speed. And I'm pretty sure you don't take fall damage with it either. In fact, recently someone managed to abuse the speed and lack of fall damage that comes with the shopping cart to make it all the way back to Spawn Island, something that people have been trying to do legitimately since the game came out. Shopping carts totally change the way you move around the map, and to be honest, it's probably for the better. Number 6. Weekly Challenges Weekly challenges seem like such an important part of Fortnite Battle Royale now. Every week, we wait for the next update to bring out the latest batch of challenges for us to complete. Challenges which force us to drop into certain locations or play in certain ways. It's a totally different experience to just playing to win. Instead, you have to complete some pretty tricky objectives along the way. But it wasn't always like this. In fact, challenges are a pretty recent addition to Fortnite Battle Royale. During Seasons 1 and Season 2, everything you saw is everything you got when it came to Fortnite. The game was still new and fresh out of development, and the idea of challenges probably hadn't even been thought up yet. But then Season 3 came along and changed everything. In Week 1 of Season 3, players of the Battle Pass were tasked with dealing damage with pistols, searching chests in Pleasant Park, reviving 5 players, visiting the giant statues of a llama, fox, and a crab, following the treasure map in Dusty Depot, killing people with snipers, and then finally killing people in fatal fields. As you can tell, the general structure and style hasn't changed since they were introduced in Season 3, but the fact that challenges changed the way people played the game when they were first introduced is undeniable. Number 5. Hop Rocks When Season 4 came around, a lot of things changed, but one of the coolest things to happen was the introduction of Hop Rocks in certain areas of the map. Anywhere a meteor had fallen across the Fortnite Battle Royale map, there would be Hop Rocks alongside the crater. They basically looked like these blue glowing crystals, and they had some pretty crazy effects if you managed to use one of them. Hop Rocks basically gave players the ability to jump really high for a short period of time. It was like you had gone to the moon or something and were suddenly playing in low gravity. Even better, when you had consumed one of these Hop Rocks, you also didn't take any fall damage. So it was a great way to clear distances without having to worry about taking any fall damage at all. You could also use the Hop Rocks to seriously confuse your enemy. When they were first added to the game, it was much harder to keep track of an enemy soaring through the air than it was an enemy just running across the ground. Not only that, if someone was really good, they could just use their Hop Rock Jump to totally clear your fort or building and take you out in a single shot. Who knows if Hop Rocks will be around after Season 4 ends, but they totally change how people play around certain areas of the map. Number 4. Jetpacks Since we're already talking about things that make you go higher up into the air, I might as well discuss the jetpacks in Fortnite Battle Royale as well. Jetpacks are a pretty weird item to talk about, because they were delayed for so long. They were first announced way back in February when they were listed as coming soon on the in-game new update section that pops up when you log in. Then we didn't hear about them for ages, which prompted players to ask Epic about them like every single day. Apparently they had been delayed due to design problems, and considering how jetpacks were when they were actually released, I can't help but wonder how strong they were to begin with. When they were added into the game, people immediately realized that jetpacks were the most ridiculous thing to ever be added into Fortnite. It completely changed the game, allowing people to fly straight up a tower to take someone out instead of having to build around their problems. I mean, why build at all when you can just fly around everything? Luckily, Epic realized their mistake with the item and promised that the jetpack would only be a limited time item, and it will be leaving incredibly soon. Number 3. Tilted Towers in January, there was a massive map overhaul to Fortnite Battle Royale, and one of the new locations that were added was now the notorious Tilted Towers. When it was released, the development team behind the game called Tilted Towers the game's very first city. In reality, it is pretty much the same size as locations like Greasy Grove and Pleasant Park, but the extra height and the crazy amounts of loot that you can find in all of the buildings makes it feel like somewhere much bigger. Ever since Tilted Towers was introduced to the game, it has become one of the most dropped to locations on the Fortnite map. Every time the battle bus draws close to it, a whole load of people jump out, without fail, all trying to drop onto one of the high value buildings to soak up as much loot as possible before going on a massive killing spree. Number 2. Vending Machines When vending machines finally found their way into the game, the Fortnite community was pretty happy. The item dispensers had been pretty highly anticipated, especially after someone managed to glitch inside of a mountain, only to find one of the vending machines sitting inside of it. Before vending machines were introduced into the game, 
players were forced to rely on pure luck to get their loot, hoping that either a chest or a random drop would give them the weapons that they needed. Luckily, the vending machines gave you another way to get the items you needed if things were looking bad. There are five different types of vending machines. Common, which costs 100 materials. Uncommon, which take 200. Rare, which costs 300. Epic, which costs 400. And then finally, Gold, which costs 500 materials. Each vending machine sells a total of three different materials, selling one for wood, one for brick, and one for metal. Sure, it's still up to luck what you get in them, but it's another way of getting weapons if you don't have the guns you need, which can be pretty useful in a bad situation. Number 1. The Divots and Mini Divots The biggest change in Fortnite Battle Royale history has probably got to be the massive changes to the map that Season 4 ushered in. Sure, there were map changes that had some pretty big impacts in the past, but nothing on the scale of Dusty Divot and all of the smaller divots that had been made by the catastrophic meteor impact at the beginning of Season 4. For a start, there is the Dusty Divot itself, the location of the massive meteor impact that left a giant hole in the ground. Over the course of Season 4, the Dusty Divot location has changed a lot, with the research facility around it growing up further and even grass and trees beginning to grow back in the area. Then there are also the smaller impact locations scattered around the map, giving people more reasons to go to out-of-the-way locations for more loot than hop rock spawns. This massive change also introduced Epic Games' new way of handling map changes. All of these new areas haven't just been left alone since the new season began. Over time, they have slowly been built up and changed. For example, Tilted Towers is now pretty much fully rebuilt, and most of the hop rocks having been removed, and the impact crater of the meteor being completely covered over. And there you have it, our list of the top 10 biggest changes made to Fortnite. Do you agree? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos from Arcade Cloud on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Take care and game on!